Hey, remember how frustrating it was as a kid seeing those back to school signs popping up in July? No! No! It felt like summer was just getting started and shops were already pushing school supplies and clothing. Well, now that I've been designing for a number of years, I get it. With the internet and shipping delays, it's smart to start early. Parents, especially moms, love getting their kids new clothes and funny or cute t-shirts are always a popular hit. In today's video, I'll show you how to find inspiration, then using Canva, we'll create a new eye-catching design version to help boost sales. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Hey, welcome to my computer screen. As you can see here, I'm currently on Google. You know, in this day and age, it is really easy to find inspiration for any design idea that you might have. The whole idea of writer's block and design block really has become a thing of the past simply because there's just so many resources out there that you can actually click into view and gain inspiration from. Now, what I've done on the screen here is I've simply typed in back to school t-shirt ideas for kids. And if I hit enter, all right, what we want to do is we want to click on images here. So all we're seeing is are just images of pictures posted on the internet pertaining to back to school ideas for kids with respect to t-shirt designs. And as you can see here, there are a ton of t-shirt ideas that you can simply go through spend a few moments, have a cup of coffee, you know, take a look and see what there is and see what really resonates with you. And once you find a design idea that, you know, you really like, that is the time when you want to save it, place it somewhere in your hard drive where you have easy access to, and then analyze it to see what was it about that design that attracted your attention. Because if it attracted your attention, it's a sure bet that it has probably attracted the attention of other paying customers, particularly like moms out there who have young children who would love to dress them up for the first day of school. So we want to analyze what was it about that design that attracted your attention and try to replicate and tweak it a little bit into your own design so that your new fresh design that you're going to be uploading into your online business is going to have a fighting chance of gathering more sales for your business. So I already went through this exercise so that this video won't be very long. And basically, the one design that I came across was this one that you see over here. I downloaded it and I placed it over here. So happy first day of school. Now again, I repeat, I am not going to be duplicating this design. I am not going to be using the text of this design. For me, that's immoral and that's unethical to try and copy somebody else's design and make it out for my own. You can take inspiration and that's what we're going to do. But let's take a look at this particular design and analyze what was it that caught my attention. Well, off the bat, we can see that, you know, the font style that they use is very bold. It's very thick. It's very colorful. Even on a white background, it really stands out. We've got first day of school here with these little dots over here, which I thought was really, really cool to see. And then we've got the rest of the caption all in black font. So happy and of school, we're in black and a font that complements the font that was used for the words first day. What also caught my eye was the fact that we had a nice circular pattern and all of the elements in the design fit within the circle. And you can even see here the pencil graphic that they use was slightly curved so that everything fits in within that circle. So we've got a nice circular design. We've got bold, colorful fonts. We've got a lot of nice graphics that have been interjected into the design pertaining to school. Okay, we've got a book here, a ruler, paper airplane, and you know, just a few other graphic fillers just to fill out the entire design. Okay, so basically, we've got this design. This is what we're going to try and emulate. We're going to gain inspiration from. I already went ahead and created the design to show you how easy it is. So let's start with the first slide. Okay, so the first two things that I did was I created a circle in Canva. To do that, all you want to do is make sure you go on elements, type in circle, and obviously you can see it right there, circle shape, it pops on, and it really doesn't matter what color you're going to use for it. I chose a dark blue, uh, just so that it would stand out against all of the other elements in the design. So I stretched out the circle here, basically to fill in the canvas. And remember, the canvas size is 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. And then I went ahead and selected a font. Now, the font that I chose was Balloon Extra Bold for the number five. And then for the TH, the font style was called More Sugar. So if you're using the Pro Plan, 
of Canva, you will have access to all of the fonts and you can actually find these two fonts and use them for your own designs, okay? So then what I did was obviously I started placing it around. I chose two colors that I felt complemented each other. So we got this orange and this green. Again, it was just a color set for the beginning. I could easily change the colors at any time throughout the design process, but I wanted something that was gonna stand out. And the other thing that I did was I clicked on effects and I gave both a thickness. Now the small letters TH had a thickness of 50, while the number five had a thickness of 10. Basically what I did was I went on to ChatGPT and I asked it to give me a number of back to school related captions that were funny or cute and I went through a whole list. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I've done that a number of times on my videos. By now most of you know about ChatGPT. You can easily go in and type it yourself and see what ChatGPT gives you. So I was going to create a scalable design for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade of primary school, elementary school. I wouldn't suggest going past the sixth grade because as students get a little bit older, they're not looking for these cutesy type of t-shirts. These are t-shirt designs targeted for the very young children in elementary or primary school. Okay, so the next element that I wanted to add to the design is the word grade. And this is an element in the design that was going to remain the same in all of the scale designs. All right, so there it had, I already did it. And again, the font was the same as the TH, so more sugar, and this time I actually kept them in capital letters. And I changed the colors of each letter in the word grade, but keeping the same color temperature as one and number five. And to do that, all you need to do is just click on the letter G here. We're going to change the color. As you can see here, Canva has given me a color palette of other colors within the same color temperature. And it was just a question clicking on any of the colors that appealed to me so that I can get a nice, you know, gradient of colors in the, uh, in the word gray. So let's go back to blue. Don't worry, again, the fact that the blue might be similar to the background circle, we're going to be getting rid of it by the time that we finish the design. Okay, so the next thing that I needed to do was to bring in a caption that I had asked ChatGPT to provide with me. And as you can see here, the one that I went with was ready to rule all stars. So it's sort of like a before and after type caption. So it's ready to rule fifth grade fifth grade all-star, okay? So I basically typed in the text. Again, the font that I used was more sugar. And in order to give it that circular effect, all you have to do is click on effects and down below over here where it says shape, you're gonna choose on curve and then just grab the slider and you wanna move it to the left or the right until you see you know, the curvature of the statements that you're putting in the captions to fit nicely over the template of the circle that you have. Again, it's all about you. You need to eyeball it. There's no precise measurement or whatnot. Just you know, stretch it out and curve it to what you are happy with. Okay, so the next thing that I had to do was to start adding in the school supply elements. And Canva has a really great library of school supply graphics. As you can see, I've already added some of them. To find them, all you wanna do is click on elements and then in the search elements field, you wanna type in school supplies. And after hitting enter, just click on graphics and then you're going to see all of the graphics pertaining to the keyword school supplies that you have access to, again, depending on the subscription base that you have with Canva. And it's just a matter of going through them and picking and choosing which school supply element you would like to incorporate into your design. Again, no two designs are ever gonna be the same. I might like something and you might like something else. And that's the beauty of the design. We're creating something unique to provide to our clientele. So as you can see here, I chose the glue one and I tilted it slightly so that it sort of follows the curvature of the circle. We've got some crayons, we've got an art palette, a brush and art palette, a book with a, a pencil, a pair of open scissors, a paper clip, and then a paper airplane. So we're keeping a little bit in line with you know some of the elements that we got inspiration from, from the original design that we found from the internet. Okay, so now that we had all of this set, it was just time to start filling in all of this dead space here because we wanted to provide as much color and as many elements as we could possibly put in without overburdening. I think for this particular design, the number of school supplies graphics that I embedded into this design was more than enough. When I did try to add a few more, it just felt too cluttered, it felt unbalanced. And if you feel that a design is you know, unbalanced, chances are the clients or rather the customers who are seeing your designs might feel the same way too as well. Again, if you're uncertain, 
ask somebody in your household or maybe a work colleague or a friend, somebody who is unbiased and doesn't have any emotional resonance tied to this design to have a look and give you an idea in terms of whether you're on the right track or whether you've gone off onto left field. Again, don't be afraid of getting criticism. Better to get some constructive criticism now when you're in the design stage so you can modify and tweak things as opposed to putting the design up out for customers to see and then somebody saying, you know what, if you had done this or if you had done that, it probably would have been a better design. You're just gonna be deflated and you don't really feel down and probably that will transpose into the customers too as well when they see it and the likelihood of making a sale might be negligible. So don't be afraid to tweak at the design stage. It'll save you a lot of grief down the road. Okay, so now it's time to start adding in the other elements. And I was thinking, you know, little dots, little heart icons, stars, just in different sizes and different colors to fill in all of the design. And basically that is what I did here. As you can see here, I added a bunch of stars. Again, not too many, different sizes. I followed the top of the five here. I followed the border of the circle with some dots, um, some black stars just to add a little bit of contrast. And I filled it out. Now, the next thing I want to do was simply basically to delete the circle template in the background. And to do that, all we need to do is just click on position, bring in all of the layers, and we're going to click on the circle and simply it's just a matter of hitting delete on your keyboard. And boom, there you have it, it's gone. And you can see the design against the white background already is looking really sharp. So you can just imagine it on a white t-shirt or the fact that you will be downloading it on a transparent background as a PNG. If the online shop that you upload designs to offers other light pastel type of colors, you know, the customer might actually be interested in purchasing it on a light blue or a light pink. I went ahead and made some other variations of it just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Here is the one for first grade. So ready to rule first grade. And I did have to tweak things around a little bit. Don't be afraid to tweak things around with respect to the elements just to give them a bit of space and to breathe. It doesn't have to be an exact carbon copy of the previous one. So long as your elements are there, there is continuity, but you want to make sure that there's some breathing room for the elements to shine through. Okay, so that was the first grade. Um, here's the second grade. Again, what I did was I actually increased the size of the letters in grade just to fill it up a little bit, given the fact that two was a bit narrow and I moved it to the side there. I really thought that the heart sat really nicely over there. Um, in terms of the third grade, again, I shrunk down grade slightly tweak things around a little bit. In fact, just seeing this, I think maybe perhaps I could have done this. In fact, I'm going to right now. Again, don't be afraid to step away from your designs and then come back to it after with a fresh pair of eyes. You might see some things that you didn't see before because you have been so engrossed in creating the designs that even your eyes can betray you from time to time. So take a step, go away from your computer, have a cup of coffee or have a drink or go on the treadmill and do a little bit of walking or whatnot. Um, come back, take a look at it with a pair of fresh eyes, and you'll probably see things that you could actually tweak a little bit more to make your design even that much better. So this was the one pertaining to the fourth grade. Okay, now the next thing that I did was I reversed it and I wanted to see what it would look like on a black background. And basically it was really simple to reverse. Basically all I did, let's just do that with this one here. I'm going to duplicate the page just to show you how quickly and easy it is. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna change all of the black things to white. So we're just gonna click on that, choose that and select white. Don't worry about the fact that they're disappearing. We're going to change the background to black and you'll be able to see everything accordingly. And again, it really doesn't take that long, particularly if you only have a few elements that are just solid colors, you know, black against white, you wanna switch those over. The other aspects that are colors, you're gonna leave them. Now, the only other thing that I need to remind you to do is to change the background color of the border because a black border with a black background is not going to look nice. So to do that, we just click on effects, we click on the black and we change it to white. It's simple as that. And to speed up the process, if I click on all of the elements and hold the shift key on my keyboard, as I'm clicking on all of them, you can get it done all in one go. So we're gonna click on the black, change it to white, and there you have it, we're done. Now we just change the background to black, click anywhere on the canvas, change the color to black, and there you have it, you've got it on a nice black background and you know what it looks like on a black t-shirt. Now again, guys, let me remind you, particularly if you are new to the design industry, do not download your designs with a black or colored background. 
it will not look good on a t-shirt design. The black from your computer will not match the black from the t-shirt. It'll stand out like a sore thumb and people will not buy it. You need to make sure that you download your designs with a transparent background. If you've got the pro version of Canva, you can do that simply by clicking on share above me here. You're going to click download and you want to make sure that just as you can see above me, transparent background is toggled and obviously making sure that it's set to PNG. Once you click on download, the entire design will be downloaded with a transparent background and you can upload it onto any t-shirt or print on demand product that you want and you will have peace of mind that you're not going to have an ugly background behind it. If you do not have the paid version of Canva, what you can do is you can download the design with the colored background and then find a free background removal tool on the internet. Simply go into Google and type out free background removal. There are a ton of them. Find one that you like, upload the image, click on the black in order for the platform to you know get rid of the black or whether it's white or whatever color and you should be able to download in png format don't download it as a jpeg or a pdf download it as png um, and you'll be able to download it with a transparent background and then upload it to your respective print on demand platform so let's just take a look at the others to see what they look like very quickly so there's the fifth grade first grade look at how colorful they are the fact that you know you've got all the color temperatures the same um, it really complements and really didn't take that long to create I mean I created the base template in a matter of 20 minutes and what took me the longest was actually actually choosing the icons that really appealed to me and placing them because what you know putting the text and the, and the captions really doesn't take that long and then once you're happy with it you just click on the text and change it the two to a three the three to a four I mean you get the idea it really isn't that difficult and it need not be difficult sometimes we tend to make things too difficult and we overcomplicate matters we get design block we get frustrated and you know we walk away from it in frustration and you don't need to overcomplicate it sometimes keeping it simple in terms of the design style is the way to go and it's the most effective in terms of generating styles okay so there's the fourth grade one and based oh, we've got a, an element here that we need to delete again always double and triple check before you download so that you can make sure that if there are any elements that are out of place you want to put them properly in their place. And in fact, I'm going to move that star down a little bit and we're good to go. So there you go. See how easy designing can be? You know, with tools like Canva, creating unique back to school t-shirts has never been simpler. Don't overthink it. Just find some inspiration and put your own twist on it. And most importantly, just start designing. You know, there's never been a better time than the present to get creative and grow your business. Who knows? You just might create the next viral t-shirt design sensation. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you found value in the content I shared today, please give this video a like. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon so that you won't miss any of my future videos. And now I'd like to invite you to click on the thumbnail that has just appeared on your screen bent on helping you to reach more success with your print-on-demand business. Until next time, happy designing.